After near borderline harassment of requests, this video is finally going to happen. This is going to be a, uh, a death setup of 2020. So, if anyone's interested in what I meant by borderline harassment, I meant it solely as a joke. Um, I've gotten a lot of requests from people to do a death setup. Now, before I explain what the fuck you're looking at here, it is what it looks like. It's an entire computer setup in a closet. And so I'll explain why that is. I live in a one bedroom apartment and I am a caregiver for my grandmother. She unfortunately, you know, needs a lot more space than I do. This is my room. What you're looking at is my personal quarters. I don't take a lot of space. All I have to myself for personal space is this room, which is a closet, and that armoire you see there, which contains all my clothes. And that guy is just always asleep, because that's all he does, is like sleep. Your life is so hard. Oh, stop. You like it, and you know it. You big wiener. Oh, yeah. I don't know what you just said there. <laughs> Why'd you just twitch your paw? His life is so hard. You know? Yeah. Is it really that hard, huh? Is it really that hard? Yeah, alright. So, let's explain what you're looking at here. I'll go over what's up top before we go into the actual computer. Starting from here, I have a little Canon printer. It's networked into the network, so it's nothing perfect, but it works. And over here we have my industrial system service, or service corpse clock. I think it's actually off. It's 11.51, and for whatever reason, it's not showing 11.51. I think it was unplugged for some time when we had that power outage, so let me put it back to 11.51. out there. Oh well. There, 11.51. Or 11.52-ish. There. Probably do half a minute there, but it's probably going to change. It's 30 seconds. There we go. Oh, uh, this runs off 120 volts AC, so... And it just turned to 11.52, so... Oops. There. Perfect, okay. Okay, sorry about that. And I have a little Sylvania or SIM car exit sign, again for shits and giggles. Uh, over here we've got a box full of stuff. I got some plants, I've got a little, uh, well, I probably need some water soon. Just a little uh, spider plant, you know, oxygen's nice. I got a speaker back there. I have a fluorescent light in here with both a UV bulb and a uh, regular fluorescent bulb. The reason I have the ultraviolet bulb in there is for the plants. They do like ultraviolet light, which is the most common light that the sun produces, and that is the big thing that plants like. So at night, what I'll do is I'll shut the main light off and I'll just run the UV bulb, which is good because it helps sterilize the air a little bit, and also the plants really fucking like the UV bulb on pretty much by itself. I have no idea what happened to you, Mr. Plant, but it looks like your leaf got chewed off or something. I'm gonna have to give him water soon anyhow, so that's what I'll do. And I have a little cactus that my girlfriend got me. I think that was a cactus that she grew. So that's hers. And I have an IBM ThinkPad back there that actually runs a server. It's not the one you saw in my videos, it's a different one. But just converted into a host machine. I've got a really old Netgear router. This thing is ancient, and it's no longer running as Wi-Fi because the Wi-Fi in this thing is terrible. And on top of that is a fan because it gets very hot in here, so having a fan to help blow out excessive heat, especially next to these two things, is good. And there's the other speaker you see for my computer setup. And over here you've got my custom built that I made. This is a NAS that I've built. It's, it runs off an AMD Athlon system, uh, relatively old, but it gets the job done. It's got a minor overclock and it also runs a Minecraft related server thing, uh, although 
doesn't really do much besides that. This thing has Windows Server on it. it mainly just has about a crap ton of hard drive storage. I think I've got like, I mean, maybe not a crap ton compared to what my, my friend Dusty and Nudge has. But this guy probably has a good six, maybe seven terabytes worth of space on it. Which is the most I've ever had in these years. And it's barely being used. Next to that is my Dell Optiplex 9020. This is running a, a fuck ton of servers, and this is actually running Ubuntu. This is my Ubuntu host machine. Uh, Ubuntu server, I believe, 14.04, 16 gigs of RAM, and it also has an i5. I could be mistaken, but it should be a 4760. It's like the highest end i5, the highest end non, or the highest end locked i5, I should say. My bad. Um, quad core, hi no hyper threading because, you know, i5. Quad core, um, and I think it's four threads, so yeah, no hyper threading. Uh, turbo boost up to like 3.8 gigs gigahertz. It's always turbo. This is a very efficient machine, so it's always turbo. This hosts World 1 6. If anyone, if any of you know these servers, it hosts like three Minecraft servers 1 6, modded survival, and e server. It also hosts a private modded world that I have. It hosts TS200 East, TS200 Overfill, TS200 um, Private, TMTB1, and I believe it also does um, some DNS routing as well on the network. And it hosts a couple other minor things, and we also store some information on it sometimes, depending on the situation. But besides that, it's pretty much just a dedicated host machine, and that's all it does in life. Next to that, we have my barometer. It's a pretty convenient little thing. It shows me the humidity levels and the temperature. As you can see, it's 85 in here. It was 98 in here earlier before I turned the fan on. And it's relatively dry, so it doesn't feel that bad. We'll go sweeping down. We have a wall phone here. It's just a Panasonic piece of crap. I use it quite often when people call and my grandma doesn't have her phone. Right there's a Spectrum modem slash uh, route or whatever. It does the phone and the internet modem, as you can see. Right here's a dash camera that you can see. I'm using it as a, uh, a webcam, but I don't really use it all that much. Huh. If you look at that, there's infrared lights on there that I actually can't see, but the camera can, so that's kind of cool. Over here we have a Netgear 5-port switch, a 100 meg switch. And over here we've got a Netgear router. This is only running as a Wi-Fi distribution. That's it. That's all this guy's doing. The network is capped at 100 megs, and that's okay because the maximum speed I get from Spectrum is maybe 200 megs down, and uh, I believe like 50 up. But really, when everything's going at once, I maybe see about 100, 120 megs. So being capped at 100 megs is all right by my standards. I don't really need that much bandwidth for what I do, so that's just spot on. And it runs 5 and 2.4 gigahertz. We have a fuck load of search suppressors, and I know a lot of people are probably going to be looking at this and saying, you're going to fucking start a fucking fire. You know, I don't, I don't need to hear it, guys. All right? I'm not putting much load on this, and there are these two search suppressors are not even overloaded in any form of way to their maximum capacity, and I know that from personal experience. Don't need to hear it on these comments, please. The search suppressor that has these plugged into them is uh, ran on battery backup, and this is to help ground the phone lines. That's the only reason they're plugged in here, is to ground the phone lines throughout the house and to also help um, run, uh, what the hell was it? To help ground the phone lines in something else, I can't remember. But this search suppressor here is running on battery backup in case we lose power. It runs the routers and the phone as well as the TS200 host machine just long enough until I can tell people to save their stuff and shut it so I can shut it down safely without anyone losing their stuff. The search suppressor over there pretty much runs everything you see up here and all my screens down here. And that's basically it for that. Um, as well as literally everything over here. Because that has a battery in it. I'm not worried about that losing power. And I can always reset this pretty easily. Alright, so we'll go to screens now. On my personal setup. We're going to get more towards the personal setup things. Right here we've got a couple of these Dell Ultra Sharp. or the, What are they? Like the Genesis Series Ultra Sharp monitors. 
Well, I think it'll tell me if I turn it on and off again. Well, maybe not. Uh, yeah, they're Dell. They're old school Dell Ultra Sharp. This one's a 1707 FP. This guy's a 1907 FP. So there's a 19 inch version of this. This is a little ViewSonic. I don't even know what the hell it is. Oh, it says it right here. VG2230 PM. And uh, this is another Dell. I love these old Dell Ultra Sharps. Another basic bitch Dell Ultra Sharp. This is a... Hold on. I've had this one for years. I don't think I'll ever get rid of it. This is a E22 15HV. So it's a 22 inch. And then this is another Genesis Series Ultra Sharp. Whoops. Oh, fucking... This is a 1703 FP. It's an older one. I use every single one of these things, and they're conv they're really nice monitors. These old Ultra Sharps, you know, for the display and the relatively low resolution compared to nowadays, with a four x three aspect ratio, they're actually very sharp monitors, especially if you're using DVI, and they're very modular and customizable. Um, they have USB ports built on them, which is good because the USB hubs are not low. I mean, they're low speed compared to shit we have now. Because we have, you know, they're pretty much capped at 2.0, but I don't really have any 3.0 USB devices because USB 3 hard drives are retarded. Don't use them. I don't. I fucking hate USB external drives. I think it's like the most useless bullshit ever. I have a fucking NAS for that. Besides, hard disks only read and write about 60 megs a second, and I can easily do that over network. So there's no point. Kind of like, it's like a pet peeve of mine. Anyhow... Um, that's 1080p. It's like the highest resolution monitor. This is like 1050p. It's like a little bit smaller resolution than this. I don't know what ViewSonic was smoking when they made this, but I don't get that. Both of these are about 22 inches. This just has a large bezel. But yeah, so. This guy is, I believe, 12, 24, or it's like 1080. I, I don't know. It's like a 4x3 ratio, but it's like flipped to portrait. Same with these. The reason I'm running these in portrait is um, it's very nice for web applications as well as Discord because Discord and Discord servers, you can list it as a list function, and that's pretty nice. Um, and up here is a Samsung. I don't actually know what this is. It's starting to fail on me. I'm noticing pixels. Like This is my girlfriend, by the way, but you can see right here on her eyebrows the pixels are failing. So I might be replacing this screen soon. I use this screen mainly for when I do live streams. And when I do live streams such as uh, Realistic Running, I will have my live stream from OBS pulled up on this screen. I'll have a preview pulled down here from YouTube and I'll have my comments area pulled up over here so I can view what people are saying. This is literally the stream center over here. And when I'm not doing that, it's always used for Discord or web browsing. I use every single one of these monitors. That is not a joke. This is my Mackie, or really it's uh, the Running Man, but Running Man is owned by Mackie. It's a fancier, it's like a Cadillac of Mackie, you know? I like Chevy, and then you had Cadillac, but they're basically the same nowadays. This is a Running Man Pro FX16. This is a very expensive, high-end soundboard. I know a lot of my dudes over in TS200 probably wonder how I do the molestation nation button. And literally it's simple. I turn my microphone on, I fucking pull this guy all the way up, and I push this little button and it becomes atomic ear rape. That's pretty much all there is to it. Um, it is extremely overkill for this application because at maximum I'm running, what, three microphones? Maybe four, I think there's one back here. No, no, I disconnected the one back here. So it's only running like three mics. Well, really two. Three if you count me plugging in my phone to this uh, eighth inch jack or 3.5 mil. So I can play sound effects and shit. Or an external laptop to play sound effects. That's what that cord's there for. Which is how I do funny things and ear rapes and whatnot sometimes. But for the most part, it's just used for gain balancing. And it has an internal FX processor on it, which actually does help when you want to give your voice some reverb or make yourself sound funnier and whatnot. But it's just what I have, and I don't really like taking this board on gigs because it has very bad, poor feedback um, compensation compared to my Yamaha board that I have. So I often then not don't use it. And I've got like a little numpad here for calculating stuff next to this. I used to have this thing because it uses a custom software 
firmware that you got to install on the computer, but I used to have it, so when you typed a button in here, it used to put a macro commands in, and I don't know what happened, but it's no longer working, so it's just there, I guess. It's not actually working. Xbox 360 controller, I've had this for fucking years, man. I've had this since, what, 20, 2012, 2011? I've had that controller almost 10 years now. It still works great. You know, take care of your stuff. It'll last forever. And I have a wireless receiver in the computer, as you can see, if I, I can actually turn it on here. It should connect to my computer. There we go. And it does work. I use it quite often when I used to play GTA V, or when I play Battlefield, I use it. Uh, right here, I've got a, uh, what the hell is this thing? I think it's like a black web, or like one of those... This is not a bad keyboard. It has like these MX Cherry Blue knockoffs. But they're not actually Cherry MX Blues. They're like, I, I don't know if they actually are or not. They feel like it. Um, it's not a bad mechanical keyboard, and it's pretty basic. It does have some lighting effects, but I think that stuff is just kind of poser and shitty, so I don't really, like, it's fucking dumb. Why would you just leave it on, you know? I mean, that's how I see it. I think that poser stuff is stupid. I'm not a big person for RGB and flashing crap. I think it's retarded. Um, right here is my Razer, was it, Death Adder 2013. I've had this for a long time, too. I've had this probably since 2017. Works great. The only problem is my middle click is getting a little bit finicky, but it works when it wants. And uh, not very satisfied with these Razer mouses. I don't think they're that fantastic, to be honest with you. I don't think they're worth the money. I think with Razer, you're just paying for the brand. And, um, yeah, that's literally it. You're literally paying for the brand with Razer, and it's not even remotely worth it. I just fucking moved something. I don't know where I moved it on my desktop. Oh, boy. No, hold on. Fuck. Anyhow, so, yeah, that's basically that. So, the speakers up here are really nothing fancy. They're just, like, old Dell audio speakers. They're, like, pretty shitty. And driving them is this fucking... I don't even know. It's just some piece of shit Panasonic amp thing. It's like one of those mobile dance studio bullshits. I don't even think it fucking works right. Oh shit, maybe it does work. I don't know. I've never really used it. I just use it as an amplifier, and normally I have my thing plugged into it. It's got like this super EQ shit, and it sounds like crap. You know, it's just a cheap-ass Panasonic bullshit. You know, there's really nothing fancy about it. It sounds like ass. Uh, with good speakers, it sounds like ass, so it's it's not cool. And I've got some spare hard drives and shit up there for uh, long-term storage. I keep hard drives right there. If I need to, I'll plug them in to a hard drive adapter, but that's long-term storage. So this is my computer. This is the uh, custom build you might have remembered I did a video on. I've done a lot to it since that video originally. I don't know if you guys remember, but I don't remember if I posted a video on this since, but this machine, I actually killed the motherboard on it. Uh, that motherboard was never designed to be put in this case. Now, if you think I'm going to learn the first time, you are absolutely incorrect, because I'm a, I'm what you call professional retard, okay? I decided that, well, I fucking destroyed the motherboard because I bent it too badly and did some shit I shouldn't have to it, and I blew about a hundred and, well, I blew like eighty maybe like 85, 90 bucks in that motherboard. I was okay with destroying that motherboard only because of one reason. I got 12 gigs of ECC DDR3 memory, and I got two Xeon E2250s, I believe they were, or E5022s, or I, I don't know. They were eight, they were four core, eight thread, uh, basically, and um, while they were efficient-based uh, Westmeyer architecture, maybe they were Westmeyer or Tywersburg, I don't remember. The point being... Those, I ended up selling those Xeons for 40 bucks, and I needed the RAM still, and that RAM cost about 40 bucks, so I really only paid for the parts on the board, to be honest with you. And uh, that board was actually not the greatest compared to the one I ended up buying. I ended up going for a Xeon, or a, I believe an Intel, I don't know, it was like the, it's, it's the workstation variant, because that was the server board variant. That version of that board was so, it was crap, because it was designed for a server, but there was no lights out management, there was no 
remote BIOS control management. It was just, I, I don't fucking know what the hell that thing was. And it only had one PCIe 16X slot, which kind of made it hard when I wanted to run multiple GPUs and whatnot, because all I had was a shitload of 1Xs if any PCIe's were there. So I ended up going the expensive route, and I got the highest end board I could find for the money for this application. And it's a good thing because the server version doesn't offer any proper lights out. You know, like it won't go in a standby. It won't go in a standby, I believe S1. So it just the light flashes, but the thing's still running at full capacity and power consumption. So it's whatever. I still have maximum fam RPMs because um, there's this magical thing called a front temperature sensor. I don't have that. That's why this little red light here is blinking. This red light says something's fucked. And I've done some work. I don't know if you saw this on video, but right there I actually have a little digital screen. But sometimes when the computer's on for very long periods of times, it sometimes glitches out and it will get stuck like it is now. But this is pretty cool. You can actually shut the machine down, check thermals all from the front of the computer, and I have a zip drive. And yes, it does work. So that's pretty cool. Zip drives, I do still use these, so it's kind of convenient. And I got a little light scribe DVD drive. I was going to originally populate the rest of these bays with like maybe a fan controller or something, but I kind of haven't gone that far yet. And just for shits and giggles, I've got a Windows XP and a Pentium 4 sticker and a Holly carburetor equipped logo. Um, I've got dual... Gigabit Ethernet NICs on here as well as the additional third NIC. That's pretty much what the hub is up there for. It's just to take all the inputs going to my computer and just put them into uh, the, the router that Stefan is sitting on. And so I have, I could just, I can go into the BIOS in this thing like when I'm not at my house. It's pretty cool. And I'm running multiple GPUs, um, but nothing fancy. We'll go over into the actual specs here, but just to give you an overview of the inside of this thing. Oh shit, I actually closed it up. Yeah, I've got a, like a little LED fan here. It gets very hot. This system is no joke, a pretty warm running system. Uh, these Xeons, the LGA1366 Xeons, the X-Series uh, 1366, which is the performance versions, um, have a very high temperature case ceiling, and they will go up there without thermal throttling. I think the highest they'll go up to is like 90 degrees centigrade. That's, that's fucking insanely hot without having to thermal throttle. And I think it's just because of its, you know, 32 nanometer uh, architecture, it's able to do that. But here's the inside of it. You can see my dual CPUs. You can see my dual 750 Ti's. Yeah, that's basically that. See again, I've got the front facing fans. And they pull in a lot of heat. And again, this system runs pretty hot. And every single card slot in there is populated. I've got a little capture card in this too, which is pretty cool. So I'm able to capture cable TV and shit. I'll probably leave this open a little bit because this machine gets too warm sometimes with the case on. Yes, it is a sketchy fucking computer. No, not even a joke. But it works pretty well. If you're wondering what my actually what my desk is, it's a 1940s makeup stand and a piece of fucking plywood with shelf brackets. That is my fucking desk. You think I'm joking now? I am not. Let's show you now. Let me go to system and I'll explain everything in this machine. So I, I'm running dual CPUs. So there's my specs if you want to see it. I'm running Windows 10 Pro for workstations. There's my version in the build. Um, as you can see, there's my actual model board. It's a S5520SC. That's the actual board information. Um... As you can see, there's my first physical CPU. I'm running an X5670 at 2.93 gigahertz. It is a 6-core, 12 threads, which means I have hyper-threading. And I have another one in here, too. So I'm running a total of 12 cores and uh, 24 threads. Um, there's my BIOS information, my SM bus, or my SM BIOS, BIOS mode configurations. Uh, you can see the exact baseboard version. This is kind of funny. This should be a, a heavy-duty workstation, but in reality, the platform role is set up as an enterprise server, and I think Windows is interpreting that due to the um, the hardware that's given because I'm currently... I have a, a lights-out management device and all this crazy crap, so it's probably... That's what it's assuming it as. Um, as you can see, 
Um, and there's my RAM. I only have 36 gigs, and I'm going to tell you right now, that's more than enough for gaming and whatnot, but I do a lot of content creation, and oh my god, Adobe Premiere will make any form of RAM its bitch on render. It is, like, bad. So, um, I might actually be maxing out the RAM at 128 gigs. I'm going to be dropping at least 100 bucks for that, because it, it kind of is needed. Um, there's my vis available physical memory, and there's my Hyper-V stuff, as you can see. Like, it's just, it's got all this crazy virtualization bullshit. Um, and there's my software drivers and whatnot, and components. You can see my displays. I don't actually know if this will work right. Yeah, here we go. So, I'm running dual 750 Ti's. They are not, hear me out, they're not running an SLI. The reason behind this is, first off, these particular 750 Ti's do not have SLI connectors. And even if they did, I wouldn't want to run them in SLI. Here's my rationality behind it. I'm driving six monitors. Each card can only handle three monitors at a time. I'm not exactly sure if SLI, I've never fucked with it, but I'm pretty sure SLI does not like running uh, multiple configuration GPUs. At least the uh, the uh, Kepler series cards, I'm pretty sure they don't run multiple GPUs in SLI, or multiple monitors over the original specified of one. I could be mistaken on this. I haven't really fucked around with as many monitors as I have now in SLI configurations, so I, I wouldn't know. But I do know this. Um, it is completely unnecessary to run that kind of a, a, a setup for me, so I, I have no intention on physically doing that. Um, but the reason I have dual 750s is not necessarily to just run six monitors, because the maximum each card can handle is three. It's necessarily because I can actually use a secondary card as a pre-encode and post-render card, which is really good when I do live streaming. Matter of fact, right now as I'm recording, my card... Oh, well, okay, didn't mean to do that, but if you look here, GPU Zero is currently running Gary's mod, as you can see. And if you look over here in details, poking around over here, oh, maybe I'll go to uh, performance, oh, maybe it's in processes. If you go to over to GPU, you see the highest being used right now is OBS. And look, that's being utilized as an encode on GPU-1. This takes a lot of stress off my CPU, even though I have more than enough multi-threading capabilities to run OBS without a GPU encoder, it still helps make efficient use of resources and I can run a fuck ton of stuff doing this. Um, and I'll get into multitasking and single tasking. And somebody's fucking slamming my head in the game. And you can see, you know, Gary's Mod over here just using barely anything. Because Gary's Mod is more CPU rendered than GPU. As you can see, GPU 0 or 1, whatever you want to call it. What The card that's driving my game for the most part is mainly using its 3D aspects. And it is doing a little bit of encoding. While my other card is mainly picking up on the encoding and also sharing memory between the second, the first card. Here's the problem with these cards. I have no complaints. They have more than enough power for what I do on the daily. And they are more than fantastic cards. But the problem is, is that I only have 2 gigs of RAM. It's not enough in this system uh, for vi virtual memory. Um, and when I overclock them, they will actually become very respectable cards for their time. And being that they're a budget card uh, back in 2012, I could be mistaken about that, but it was a long time that they were put out. Uh, they do a very good job. And so I have no intent on upgrading right away. Here's the big thing with this machine. Now, I have all these threads. So right now I have that viewing the graph, as you can see. If you go to change graph to, you can go to NUMA nodes, which is physically... CPU threads, then you've got overall utilization, and then right here you've got logical processors, which includes hyper-threading as well, all, all threads, those possibly including, uh, you know, this as an example, and I also have it showing kernel timings as well, which also shows the actual speed stepping factor uh, of the CPU timing. So kernel timings is like physically unused timing being utilized by the actual system. It's called the system idle process and it helps utilize unused areas to help clock the CPUs up. And I'm constantly, you know, 
uh, turbo boosting right here. I'm, I'm never just turbo boosting for a short period of time. I'm always turbo boosted on the system. And the cooling is just good enough to the point where it will go all the way up to the max turbo speed of 3.22 on renders of videos and stuff. So it, for, for the most part, it's, it's pretty phenomenal what it can do multi-threading wise. Single threading wise is uh, a totally, totally different story. I cannot run single thread applications for fucking shit on this system. An Intel Xeon X3370, I say Xeon and that sounds legendary, but in reality, that processor that I just identified with those numbers is a Core 2 Duo on steroids. That's all it is. It's a Core 2 with quad cores and at 3 gigahertz. And that thing walks fucking circles around this machine's uh, single threading performance. Now, I think a lot of it's to do with the fact that Intel with 32 nanometer threads was really pushing the boundaries of what they were able to do single thread wise while still offering multi thread performance. And I think a lot of it is also to blame on the QPI. And anyone who's wondering what the QPI is, uh, this machine here, this motherboard that I have, LGA 1366, uh, Intel had created a special socket system uh, to help, you know, prevent extreme bottleneck and throttling, uh, back throttling on CPU performance. Uh, originally, multi-CPU systems shared a Northbridge, and that was a lot of information that was being stocked up. The Northbridge could not handle that. So Intel's QPI system, or QPI stands for Quick Path Interlink, their idea was, okay, well, we'll make the center co-CPU, so I have two CPUs in it, in like a, like a co it's not even a co-CPU, it's just a thread manager, that's all it is. Because CPUs that Intel makes from this point on, from 1366 up, so this is based on the first generation Core i's, basically. So it's very old. Uh, for Core i series, this is as old as it gets, um, in terms of architecture-wise. But anyhow, Intel realized that, okay, well, instead of having the North Bridge run everything, we'll have two North Bridges, you know, one per CPU socket, but the North Bridge will only handle certain things, like management of, you know, the buses and informations and whatnot, and that'll be it. So the front side buses, because I have two of them, really don't do anything like they did back in the day. Instead, Intel designed the Core i series with having um, the abilities to transfer data between the PCIe lanes as well as everything directly to the CPU. Which is why I have a fuck ton of RAM uh, cards shoved in there because you need to have the exact same on one CPU configuration as the other. The reason they do this is because the QPI needs all information from CPUs to be correct. The CPU handles memory management. Okay, instead of having the memory go to the north bridge, then the CPU, the memory goes straight to the CPU and the north bridge afterwards if it needs to go somewhere if it needs to. It, the Northbridge doesn't do anything like it used to for the most part. It's pretty relatively low usage for the most part. Anyhow, the two CPUs run lanes, PCIe lanes, USB controllers, everything is individually used. Like half of my video card, like one video card is running on CPUs, one Northbridge, while the other video card is running on the other CPUs, Northbridge. So basically, in order to transfer RAM and information and between CPUs, you have the QPI. The first generation versions were kind of hit or miss, and they were not the greatest. And Intel even acknowledged that. But hey, you got to start somewhere. Intel took a shot. They did a good job, in my opinion, for their first try. But the problem is when you're multitasking really intensely on this system, and you've got every single core spiked, there's always more room. Like, I've maxed this thing the fuck out, and, and I've only done it once or twice. I've maxed the CPU and everything, every resource that I had out. And, and in order to do that, you need to start up GTA V, Battlefield 4, Gary's Mod, Minecraft, Adobe Premiere, while it's rendering, stream on OBS, have a fuck ton of Chrome tabs open, and a couple other games I, do, I can't acknowledge at the moment. And then you'll start to really see it climb, but you'll start to notice it'll get very unstable because the QPI really cannot... It starts bottlenecking at the QPI. It's not as bad as it would be if it was going to the North Bridge, but still, what I, see what I mean? It, you're defeating the purpose, Intel. Anyhow, 
My single threading is, is not very good. I don't know if I have CPU-Z on this system, but if I do, I will be more than able to show you. Perhaps I don't. Let me, uh, maybe I do. Hold on. Oh, I do, actually. It's right here. Let's see if it'll actually work here. And I can show you what will happen when I max out the system. I don't know how OBS is going to like this. It probably won't, to be honest with you. Um, and I probably won't be able to get a good benchmark reading because I get a lot of stuff running in the background. The machine's pretty warm, etc. But let's compare it to a 6700K. And keep in mind, a 6700 or a 77 would be better, but we'll do this. So there's a pretty high-end Skylake. Pretty much still Intel's, not, maybe not number one flagship anymore, but they're still you can still buy them from Intel as far as I know. We do a benchmark here. I mean, that's, that's actually a shitty score. I've gotten as high as 4,200, but right now, considering with the amount of applications, the relatively poor multi-threading performance because of all the shit I'm using, that's fine. But look at my single thread. That's ass! I mean, a 6700 walks circles single thread-wise. Now, if I go over here to the Core 2 Duo, right? A Core 2 Duo E8500 walks over, not, not by a lot, walks over the single thread of this machine. And that's just it. That's the problem with this machine, is I don't have good single thread performance. So basically, to sum it up, the one downside with this machine is I can do a boatload of stuff at a decent speed. Now, not fast, but just at an okay pace, you know, slow and steady. And not have any problems affected by it. But I can never, ever, ever, ever do one thing really fast. And that is my one kryptonite flaw with this particular system build. So yes, it's it's it works. It can, I can run a lot of stuff, but like Minecraft shaders, I can't run them. I don't have the single core performance that the machine needs in order to run Minecraft shaders. So yes, that's, again, that's my kryptonite. Anyhow, my dudes, that's all for this video. If you did like this video, please shoot me a comment if you'd like to see another one. I do have a lot more computer reviews I'd like to do, especially when it comes to building more computers. I'd like to do that on video as well. So thank you guys for watching. Please have a wonderful evening, and I hope to see you guys next time.